Welcome to Gifted Drams. This is a series. I'm Daniel Whittington. I'm the Chancellor at Wizard Academy and Whiskey Marketing School. And we were looking for a way to talk about whiskey that brands had sent in that I thought you guys might be interested in. Um, and so what we're doing is I put all of them into a hat so I don't ever review them in any specific order. I just sort of grab whatever's next. And I don't look. <laughs> I was just looking. <laughs> I don't look. And I pull out one and I go into it completely blind. I'm gonna pull it off the shelf, I'm gonna pour it, I'm gonna give first impressions, and then I'm gonna get out my laptop and I'm gonna Google all the things that I can find about it and we're gonna learn about it together. So other than having received these bottles from the brand who was hoping I would review it, I don't really know anything about them and I should not look. What do we got here? Uh, sorry, that was a, uh, I grabbed two. No, no, I'm not gonna do that one because I just did Waterford. I should probably pull that one and put it back. <laughs> What's the point of a hat if you don't actually take what the first one was? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do this one. Uh, and it is Jack Daniels Single Malt. So, man, man, hang on a second. So, Jack Daniels sent this box. I don't know who sent it, it just showed up. And it's their single malt in Oloroso sherry casks. Now, I love the fact that so many of the big brands, Bullet and all these, and I'm gonna review some of them, are now tiptoeing into single malt. I mean, Jim Beam is doing it. And, uh, and I love that because I love American single malt and I'm excited to see it grow. And I'm glad that the big producers are finally uh, getting their gear, their, their butts in gear and making single malt. This, <laughs> I happen to know, this box arrived. It sat next to my desk. A couple of my staff were curious. They opened the box and opened the bottle and tried some. And then I came in, I was like, guys, what are you doing? I, need, <laughs> I have to review that. Oh, well we left some. I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. So here's what we're doing. This is the box they sent. It's very large. But what comes in it is a couple of glasses that, I mean, I guess I can use them. I'd rather use a Glencairn. And this piece of paper, and that's what we're gonna check out together. I am curious to see um, how it compares to a Glencairn, so maybe I'll try it in both. So. They sent a sample bottle. This is, well, shoot, what is the 200 mil. Um, so a third of a bottle, a little less than a third of a bottle. Um, and I'm gonna, re wow, that is really hard to read. Okay. This is one of those things that's really like fancy, but uh, like I'm gonna have to really focus to read that's, a, that's a, a, a small little pet peeve of mine is when people use pretend handwriting script fonts because it looks pretty, but it's almost illegible. Um, okay, I'm, I'll pour it in their glass first. We'll see what the experience is and I'll switch it to the Glen Cairn. So first, <clears throat> huh. I would not have picked that as a malt. Not at first. It's starting to open up a little bit. Strangely, I think I would have thought this is an American wine finished spirit. But I, I don't know what to do with this. So like my brain, I wish I didn't know. The, the whole suggestion that you guys had like shoot it blind, I should have because my brain keeps trying to find Jack Daniels in this and I'm not finding, but I'm also, it is also sort of warping my experience with classic American single malt. I don't know if they're using new oak, but it sort of smells like, it. oh, they're not, but like it's Oloroso Sherry, but I don't know if it's only Oloroso Sherry, hopefully they'll say it, or whether it was finished Oloroso Sherry, but if it's a whole life Oloroso Sherry, it definitely smells like it, but there's also this slightly tangy note that really reminds me of Jack Daniels and this sort of like grassy, uh, thin grassy tart note in the nose 
that's behind all the sherry cask notes. I need to, um, I'm gonna put this in Glencairn because my nose is not used to that glass. Yeah, there it is. So it, it is, it does have the wine sweetness, but it's also got these sort of like cut grain, astringent green notes that are like way behind that. Hmm. Oh, okay. Huh. That's strange. So it starts as this like can hard candy. And then it goes slightly like a sour tanginess. And then it finishes with candy. This is one of the sweeter like super hard candy sugary malts that I've ever had. It really is in the direction of like a Jolly Rancher. Ah, it's really weird. Okay. Dear friends and or ambassadors, thanks for joining me in the global unveiling of the first, first American, oh, the first American single malt available exclusively to global travelers. So this is a travel market. I don't know that I feel like that's, is that really true? But our distillery team has leveraged 150 years of whiskey making, yeah, this is Jack Daniels, to create this exclusive innovation of one of a kind American single malt. Uh, a new take on the timeless traditions of single malt scotch. Crafted 100% malted barley, yeah, of course. Everything done in Lynchburg, because it should. It goes through the charcoal mellowing process. That makes sense. And then matured in, ah, there it is. Matured in charred American white oak and finished in Oloroso sherry casks. Bottled at 40. So... They're doing new oak. That's what's throwing me on this thing. I'm be I don't know that they are. I don't actually, they don't say anything about this. Maybe we'll find out in a second. Uh, I don't know that it starts in new oak, but it sure tastes like it's got those like super heavy wood sugars density of a new oak beginning because for the dark as this is, um, it doesn't come across as pure sherry. It comes across as, as woody and, uh, and oak and then a little hint of sherry. Like the sherry is pretty subtle. And it really shows up in the palate where it turns into hard Jolly Rancher candy. Ah, it's not my favorite. It's so sweet. And it's kind of papery, thin, hard candy, sugar sweet. Uh, and it's, uh, it's lost me a bit. This is not my preferred flavor profile. Um, if you like Jack Daniels, and which, you know, there's some really great Jack Daniels whiskeys. This might be a really interesting, and you don't, aren't a fan of scotch. This might be a really interesting tiptoe into the direction of uh, American single malt. Um, because it will bring along with you a lot of the things that you like about Jack Daniels. Which, you know, feels fair. I mean, you do want to maintain a distillery profile at some level and not just invent a whole new category that doesn't align with any of your brand or your drinkers who like your whiskey. So... On a pure business level, this is probably a smart decision. Um, from the perspective of somebody who loves American single malt, this flavor profile is outside of my preferences. Um, I'm going to switch to my laptop. I'm going to do a screen record so you guys can see. And then Jack Daniels single malt. Ooh, I misspelled that, but I'm not going to change it. There's not a lot of... It is a travel exclusive. Let's see what Breaking Bourbon has to say about it, because those guys always do a great job of giving you a solid synopsis. All right, so this one is... So, okay, for clarity purposes, a travel exclusive, in my experience, means it shows up in duty-free shops. And so it's only available to people in duty-free shops. Scotch uh, makers do a lot of duty-free only releases, travel exclusives, a lot of Scottish and American distilleries are also getting, doing it as well. Man, they want $100 for this bottle. <laughs> uh, so they had had one. He says double twice barreled. Yeah, because we just read that. Um, they both, they're about five years old. Then finished in sherry casks. Uh, a blend of a hundred sherry casks, and those are large barrels, translates to about 250, 53 gallon barrels. Um, 
So they're saying, yeah, I totally agree with whoever wrote this, which is there's a lot of people who haven't been sold on American single malt, and it's because it's malty and hefty and weighty. Um, but this one might have a shot at bringing people over. Um, and this was by Eric Hasman. And I'm just going to stop there. I don't think they're going to tell me. Well, I'll look at their actual website. I don't think they're going to tell me anymore. Oh, Agegate. That uh, always makes me laugh. Something that, because uh, definitely no one under 21 knows how to put a random date into a website. <laughs> uh, oh, I got nothing. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's just a picture. And scene. <laughs> All right, we're done with that. Breaking Bourbon did a great job of talking about it. Jack Daniels didn't. So, what's the conclusion on this? It's fine. Again, here my preference is strong here. I like scotch. It's my preferred category. I love American single malt. I like it when it's big, heavy, weighty, and really barley forward, and really, you know, a lot of presence. This is not that. This is sweetness and softness and hard candy and a little thin. If you're a Jack Daniels lover, man, there's a chance you're going to really enjoy this. And it might be a great foray into American single malt. And, and from that category, well done, Jack Daniels. We need more people drinking American single malt. And maybe this will help. <laughs> if you are used to single malt, it may not be your favorite thing. And on that note, cheers to you. Oh, banana bread. Anyway, I'm really glad you're here. Mm -hmm.